For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Glyph FX uh, icon library that comes with your C++ Builder or Rad Studio license. It's installed in this folder here by a, as a zip file by default, but you can come in and extract these, which is what I've done. And I'm going to go in here and use these uh, arrow icons, which are these great looking uh, PNGs with transparency. I think look really nice. There they are there. Now, uh, real quick, I'll explain to you why you would want to use uh, multi-resolution bitmaps. I get this question a lot because in FireMonkey we give you multi-resolution bitmaps where you're able to specify different resolutions of the same image. Now if you don't specify different resolutions of the same image then it will just pick the one that's closest or the one that you have and then scale it up or down. Now scaling graphics up generally looks terrible if it gets scaled up very much but you'd think scaling graphics down would be fine. But I'll point out why this is different. If you take a look at this one here, this clipboard this uh paper it has a whole bunch of lines on it here which looks really nice at 256 but if we go down and look at the 16 byte one clipboard paste and um i'm gonna zoom in on this guy it only has a few lines here each line is a pixel because this is if you think about it, this is 16 pixels each of those lines is one pixel now this has less total lines on the page and those lines make up a larger percentage if we took that 256 one and scaled it down it would just be blurry it wouldn't have any indication of lines it would just be kind of the sky blue or mostly white looking graphic so that's why you want to provide the lower resolution ones that have a better uh, indication of less detail. Another example is let's say you have text. If the text gets scaled down, it's going to get all scrunched together and it's just going to become a blur. I actually worked at a company that they had a, uh, their logo, they had a standard that says the logo cannot be smaller than this many pixels by this many pixels because the letters get scrunched together and you can't read it anymore at that point. So that's why you want to provide the lower resolution versions as well as the higher resolution versions. Okay, so that's enough for multi-resolution bitmaps. Let's go ahead and use a t-image list here. So we're going to put a t-image list down. This is just a standard FireMonkey C++ Builder application. And let's put some items in here. Now, actually, explain this first. There's three areas here. This is the list of images that you are exporting, that you're making available by image index to other controls. This, these are source images that you can use to create these images here. And then this is where you can actually define the layers that make up these images. So I'll show you what this looks like. The easiest use case is you come in here and hit add and you're gonna select the image you want. So we're gonna use the left arrow and it says, what do you wanna call it? We'll just say, yep, that's fine. And here it's added it. Now it added it in all three places. So here's image index zero, which is the one we're gonna export at image index zero. But we also have a source image here, which is used to make the single layer image. Now to explain why this is this way, I'm actually going to change this to 256 because it is a 256 by 256 image. Um, we can go in and add an image this way. So we're going to say add new image into source images list and we'll call it arrow right. And I'm going, so this is the multi-resolution bitmap editor. So I could come in here and add multiple resolutions of bitmaps. And uh, actually, if you want to have it resize it automatically for you, you can use this button here. And I'll select this one and it automatically resizes it. So see, so we have a 256 and a 128 image bitmap for us. Uh, you can add as many resolutions as you want, put the scales in you want, and it'll automatically resize it. And then if you're like, you know what, it looks fine at 256 and 128, but the 64 one, that one we need to have a custom image. Then you just come in here and say, I want to go find the custom image for 64 one automatic by myself. But in this case, we're just going to leave them the way they are. And we'll say we're good to go. So now we've added a new image here and let's do add one more. And we'll call this delete. And I'm just going to select just a single image on this one. And we'll get delete. And now I can make a new image down here in the list images. I'm going to hit S. And so by first, when I hit the new one here, it selects whatever image I have in this list here and puts it down. Now I'm going to actually add a layer on this one. So I'm going to come in here and add a layer 
of that guy there. Now see, I put that one on top. I want them the other way around. So let's switch it like this. So now I've got a right arrow with an X over it. Okay. So I can then add a regular right arrow and a regular X. And I could add the other combinations of a, a left arrow with X on it as well. But you see, I have three source images here and I've defined four images by combining them together. So this could be really useful if you, for example, want to have uh, disabled controls or something like that, or disabled icons, or want to build a lot of composite images. It can be very, very flexible, a lot of flexibility in here. Uh, another thing that's interesting you can do is you can only use a portion of the image if you want to. So right now, see this, it's selected the full image, but if I just want part of the image, see that now we're just using the uh, left slash, left part of the slash there. So you can do this as well, where you just specify part of the image. I'm gonna go ahead and use the full image here. And also, um, actually the other place this comes in useful where you just use part of, an, part of an image is let's say you have an image that is a, a, a single image file that has a lot of small images in it, a lot of small icons in it. When you, uh, you can go in there and select each of those image files out and make those into separate uh, images from here. And then also if you add an image that is a multiple, the, the width and height is a multiple of this, whatever this is specified here, then it will assume that that image is actually made up of smaller images and chunk it up for you. Actually, let's go ahead and try that here. Let's do 32. So I don't have an image that is that format, but let's go ahead and do that and I'll hit add. So this guy here will be 64 separate bitmaps. Yes, let's do that. So there we go. Now see, we've it split it up into separate bitmaps for me here. Now, that wasn't useful because that image wasn't set up for that. But you can see how it worked. You can see we have one single source image and it made 64 different images here. Again, it wasn't useful because it wasn't that set up that way. Uh, the last thing though here is export is where I'm going to export these images out. So let's change this to 256 and 256. And this is going to export it. You'd call it like a contact sheet in photography. And it's going to put all those images together into one image so that you can import it again later. So let's go ahead and here to pictures. And there it is. And see, there are all the images here. And so it tried because it, <laughs> way it flowed those back together. It looks like it's almost putting the paper back together, but it's not because it's just putting back the individual pieces. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense for you. Um, oh, last thing here is this, this one here removes design time information. So if we come in here and look at this, it has the path on it. So you can move the design time information here. Yes, remove the design time information. Now if we come back in, the path is gone. So the path's only need, needed at design time. And uh, if you want to remove that, before you uh, ship your product, you can do that if you want to, or you can leave it in there. It's up to you. Okay, so now we've built our image list up. We've put some images in it. So now how do we get the images out of it? Now, the easiest way to just display an image out of it is to use the glyph, G-L-Y-F. Now, the fact that the library is called glyph effects and this component is called a glyph, a T-glyph, is a coincidence. That doesn't have to be that way. Um, but the glyph has an images and image index property. And that's all it does is displays the image out of there. So there we go, it's displaying that image. If I want to, I can hit the drop down list and preview those images. So here's that composite image I built. And then I can look and see, here's one of those uh, ones that we chunked up into little bitty pieces. But let's go ahead and use it for the composite image. If you want to add it to another control, or most or many controls, I want to say most controls, many controls also have that image, images and image index right here, images and image index right there. So now our button has an arrow on it. Now, you're probably not gonna to wanna to put your image list on your main form. If you do, you can take advantage of the cool feature to hide your non-visual components. That's really cool. Once they're hidden on the non-visual components, you can come over here and select it from the uh, structure manager, where you can see here's your source images, here's your destination images, which is all your um, images that we created from those source images based on indexes. And you can see the layers in here as well. So here's the right arrow delete. So he's got the two layers on it. And that's all accessible from the properties as well. Source destination collections.
Okay, but you're probably not, like I said, you're probably not gonna put it on your form because you wanna be able to share this image list across multiple forms, for example. So you're gonna use a data module. So let's go here, right click, add new, other, not C++ data module, not a Delphi data module. There it is, data module. Okay, so I'm going here and copy this guy or cut this guy off of here. And of course, it removed all those images. Now I'll paste it on here. And come back here, and we're going to say use unit, um, use the data module. And then come in here, and we're going to specify the image list again. And it kept track of the image index, but we need to specify image list again. All right, and now uh, let's say we wanted to get an image out in code. So let's do that here. I'm gonna put it on a uh, T image. And we're gonna extract the T image on code. Let's put it on the button click event handler here. So we're gonna say um, image one, and we're gonna assign the bitmap. And we're gonna assign the bitmap to data module two image list bitmap and so we're going to get the bitmap out and so we specify the size of the bitmap and the index of the bitmap now the size of the bitmap is going to be image one size now that's the control size we need the size float record which is right there so that's going to give us the size what that does it gives you it that way it knows which image to select out of the multi-resolution bitmap. It's going to select the ones closest to that size, and then it will resize it to that size for us. And uh, the index. So let's go ahead and just pull out, um, we'll pull out index one. All right. And that's all there is to it. So we'll go ahead and run this. And when I click the button, it pulled out the image for us automatically. There you go. That's kind of everything you need to know about image lists. Actually, there's probably more you could use it for, more uh, cool features, but it's probably the much what you need to know to get started with uh, the FireMonkey image list today.